Now, therefore, the General Assembly proclaims this universal declaration of human rights as a common standard of achievement for all peoples and all nations, to the end that every individual and every organ of society, keeping this declaration constantly in mind, shall strive by teaching and education to promote respect for these rights and freedoms, and by progressive measures, national and international, to secure their universal and effective recognition and observance. Eleanor Roosevelt's most important legacy was her unwavering support and promotion of human rights at home and abroad. Eleanor Roosevelt was born on October 11, 1884, in New York to a wealthy family. Before the age of 11, Eleanor's parents died, and she was sent to live with her grandmother, where she learned the importance of helping the less fortunate. In 1899, Eleanor was sent to attend Allenswood Academy in England, where she met her first role model, Mary Suvest, who taught her the importance of public duty. Before the age of 20, Eleanor became involved in social work and educated herself on the labor conditions of sweatshops and tenant housing. Eleanor's curiosity soon led her to become involved in public service. Eleanor Roosevelt married Franklin Roosevelt in 1905. They moved to Washington, D.C. when FDR became Undersecretary of the Navy. But Eleanor was not content with her new lifestyle and became an active member in the Red Cross. To further her work, Eleanor's passion for teaching led her to open the Todd Hunter School for Girls in 1927. She also became involved with politics and began to work for the Democratic Party and became the Vice President and Finance Chairman of the Democratic Women's Committee while pushing for women's rights and political involvement. In 1924, Eleanor became a member of the Women's City Club, a group who focused on child labor laws and workers' compensation. When FDR was elected into office, Eleanor pressured the administration to appoint women to positions of influence throughout the New Deal programs. This effort helped several women join many of the advisory boards. However, the Washington Press Corps refused to allow women members to the annual Gridiron Dinner. So Eleanor planned a gridiron widow's banquet for women officials and reporters. During the banquet, there were several skits poking fun at Eleanor and other politicians. Eleanor said afterwards that it was fun to be able to laugh at herself. Eleanor was always concerned with poverty and the unemployed. In 1933, she wrote, The unemployed are not a strange race. They are like we would be if we had not had a fortunate chance at life. Eleanor created the White House Conference on Emergency Needs for Women, the National Youth Administration, and the Public Works Art Project to support the unemployed women, youth, and artists. In 1932, the Daughters of the American Revolution created a ban on African American artists from performing at Constitution Hall. This prohibited Marian Anderson, a world-renowned singer, from performing there in 1939. Eleanor responded by resigning from the organization and had Marian perform in front of the Lincoln Memorial. In 1945, President Truman appointed Eleanor Roosevelt to the United States delegation to the United Nations. She, P.C. Chang, and Charles Malick prepared the first draft for the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The declaration passed unanimously on December 7, 1948. Today, over 50 years later, it is still used internationally as a basis on how nations should treat their citizens. Eleanor Roosevelt died on November 7, 1962, at the age of 78. Several years later, in 1968, Eleanor received the United Nations Prize in the field of human rights. In conclusion, Eleanor Roosevelt was the largest driving factor for human rights, both in the home front and abroad.